Hey everybody, welcome back to Cascadia Dispatch, prepping for non-preppers, I'm Casey. And today we are gonna talk about backing up your digital footprint, your social media, your email, your files, all of the things that are out there that you don't wanna get lost or think might be compromised. We're gonna talk about how to back those up. So based on the events of the last week, there's been a lot more focus on concerns around technology, especially online providers and services, what they can do, what they can't do, and how you and your data might play into that. So there are three specific things that I'm gonna talk about today. I'm gonna to talk about how to back up your social media, and if you watch to the end of the video, I'm actually gonna go through the process of backing up Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're also gonna talk about how to back up your email, and we're gonna talk about how to back up your files, be them on your computer or your phone or in a cloud. There have been growing concerns about technology and as a result, technology companies, I think all the way back since the invention of the wheel. We've become so accustomed to these services being free and easy to use and just part of our everyday that we sometimes forget that the fragility of them is just like any other service that we might use in real life. We plan for power outages. We plan for water outages. We should be planning for changes in digital outages, I guess, too. Before we get started, if you wouldn't mind just backing up the like button that's down there for the YouTube algorithm, we'd really appreciate it. If you're concerned about uh, networks and all these sorts of things, let us know in the comments below which networks are you most concerned about. I'm gonna cover, like I said, three of the big ones at the end, but if there are other networks that you're concerned about that you'd like us to look into, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below and we may do like a second video covering some of those networks uh, in the very near future. So email is one of those things that I think we all don't necessarily think about backing up necessarily because usually it is a service that you're using as a service. You have Outlook and you're connecting in your email accounts or you're using Gmail and you're logging in and the idea that the messages actually exist on a server and things, that's not something we really, really concern ourselves with. When it comes to email, there are a couple of easy ways to do it. The first is if you're using a client like Outlook, Usually you can go up to the top corner and there is a backup feature and there may be a couple of different ways depending on if you're using like a company or corporate email, they may have restrictions. So you may need to call them and ask them how to do that for your specific network. But for the most part, you can go up to the top and there is a backup feature. You hit backup and it's gonna create a file with all of the messages that are currently in either your inbox or you can select your subfolders or calendars, whatever you want. You may need to make a couple of these because usually they only do it for one inbox. So if you have multiple different accounts, let's say you have a work account, you have a personal account, maybe you belong to a club and you have another account, you would probably have to do a different file for each of those different accounts. But you can do that and then you'll save it off to the side. The attachments, depending on how you set that file up, may or may not transfer. Usually clients like Outlook save them in a separate folder, so they may actually not be, be saved. You may actually need to find that folder on your computer and save it. But in a lot of ways, at least the, the text of the email will be saved. So another way to back up your email is to use uh, an email to PDF conversion, either plugin or service. These plugins or services attached to your email, if you're using like a Gmail or an online service, you would just kind of log in and, and connect those together. If you're using something like Outlook, you can actually install it as an add-on or a plugin to your Outlook client. And then you would configure it to select certain folders or certain messages. And when you hit a button or set a routine to run on an automatic basis, it will convert your email messages into PDFs. Depending on the plugin or service, you can set it up so that the message actually gets deleted and you're only left with the PDF, or you can set it up where it copies the message and turns it into a PDF. For my use, I have it so it copies the email messages into a PDF and then it stores those PDFs in a separate drive. Right now, I use this mostly for backing up order confirmations and shipping confirmations. So my business, it's very easy for me to go back and find receipts and things like that. And if, for example, Gmail went down, I would actually have all of those important documents set aside as opposed to losing them if the service went down. 
So backing up your documents is one of those tasks that everybody knows they should do, but whether they actually do it as frequently as they should probably doesn't really happen. For me, there are two types of documents that I try to back up. The first are my paper documents, which you would say, how do you back up a paper document? So I actually scan all of my paper documents and digitize them so that in case something were to happen to the physical documents, I have backups of those. The second thing would be to back up all of my digital documents. So things like all my digital photos, music, movies, all of those sorts of different files for things. All of that needs to be backed up as well in case your computer's hard drive crashes, just like your filing cabinet could get destroyed in an office or something like that. Now for ease of use, I think a lot of people use cloud backups. They're easier to use. They're usually less expensive than getting a bunch of different hard drives and trying to manage all of that. And you don't have to necessarily know all of the security and privacy and encryption issues yourself. There's someone that's managing all of that for you. Some people don't like that. Some people feel like that's a problem. I get it. For the most of us, that it's okay. For some people, it's not gonna be an okay thing and that's totally fine. Everybody can kind of do their own level of security and privacy that they would like. In addition to the online cloud storage and what's on our desktops, I also use backup hard drives. So the external, getting an external hard drive is really, really important. This is the one that they have at Costco. It's not super expensive. Five terabytes for the most part will cover way more than what you would need unless you've got tons and tons of videos or something like that. But these are really, really easy to use. They plug in, they work for Mac and PC, so you don't even have to worry about what type of computer you've got. So every couple of months, I take the external hard drive, plug it into our computer and download everything that I have in the cloud as well as everything new on our desktop. Most of the external hard drives that you can get have some sort of a backup software that you can install if you would like to, and it'll just kind of automatically do it. In that case, you have to keep the hard drive attached to your computer or you have to be managing what's going on. Usually for me, I just kind of drag the files all over and then pick the ones that have been updated. It's my process, not probably the best process, but it's what I've gotten used to doing. So I would recommend either use the software that they have and kind of get that as your rhythm or just set a reminder, perhaps on the prep alerts calendar, if you haven't already signed up for that, link in the description down below to go ahead and set that up for whether it's once a month or every couple of months, you would go through and just add in anything that's new onto the external hard drives. A lot of people don't actually know that you can back up your social media accounts. Most people think of social media as something that they post to and it's just kind of gone. You actually can back up your social media accounts and with the changes that are going on with social media and people wanting to maybe move from one network to another or they don't feel comfortable being on a network so they want to leave. If you've been on any of these networks for any amount of time and participated, likely you have photos and posts and information on there that you would like to have and don't know of a way to, to get it off. Well, all of these networks actually have mechanisms to download all of the information that you've put up there to allow you to use it offline or to archive it for whatever purposes that you want. To help you out, I am going to walk through right now the process that I went through for Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, going through and backing up all of the data that I had on there and show you how to do it. It's actually pretty easy. It only took me a couple of minutes to go through and actually get all of them. So it's only a few, like a minute or two on each network. It's really, really easy to do. And then you just get links and emails and downloads. So this is actually how to do it on all those platforms. Thing we're going to do is go over to the account area and we're going to select settings and privacy then we're going to go to privacy shortcuts this takes us to this privacy control area there's all kinds of privacy and account security settings in here we are looking for facebook information your facebook information we're going to click on access your information here is a page and there's all different types of information that you have added or they have collected. You can see information about you and we are looking to download. So we're going to go to this download your information link. All right. And here we can request a copy or available copies. If you've backed it up before, I believe this is where any previous copy or when you, we set up the file to download, you'll see that. 
you can pick different date ranges. If you're doing an incremental backup, you might want to change, pick just like a couple of months. Uh, if you haven't ever done this before, then pick all of your data because this will give you all of the, the time that's available. Format, we want HTML instead of JSON. And then media quality, we want it to be high. Here is a list of all of the different types of information that you can pull down. So I've selected everything. You can go through if you only want to select certain things, you can do that too. Deselect all and click on individual ones, but I want everything and then create a file. This is going to create the file. I'm going to see if it is available yet. And it is, uh, it's still pending. So it's still creating. Once that's done, then we should be able to download it. Except for Instagram, we're going to log in and we're going to go to settings. Then we're going to go to privacy and security. And we've got account data. So we are going to click on view account data. This has all of the information about us. So if you want to see what they have, you can go ahead and do that. So here we're going to go to data download, request a download and hit next. This is going to create a file of all of the posts and everything that we have and send it to us. Make sure that your email address is correct. Hit next. You've got to enter in your password. So they're creating that file and they're going to send us the link when it's ready to download. Okay, so for Twitter, we're going to go over to more. And we're going to go to settings and privacy. And then we're going to click on download and archive of your data. Enter your password. And then we can request for a zip file of our Twitter data, or if you also were on Periscope and you may have Periscope data, you can also select that as well. Request the archive. It takes a, a little while to put it together, but once it's ready, it'll let you know. And then you've got a backup of all your Twitter data. So that's going to do it for today's video, talking about different ways to back up your digital footprint, your digital files, your social media accounts. If you're concerned about what's going on with the different social networks or with online services or digital security, things like that, specifically if you're thinking about networks that you'd like to back up that I didn't mention outside of the big three, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. Let us know. We'll come back and either do like a second video or maybe we'll bring in some people that are experts in cybersecurity maybe and do a live stream. I don't know. There's a bunch of different options, but I wanted to get this out to everybody really quickly just because I know that there's a lot of concern, especially with these bigger networks and things. And while nothing necessarily has changed about that in the last couple of days, if you were concerned, a lot of people didn't know that these mechanisms existed. So I wanted to make sure that that was covered. Everybody knew that they could do it. It was super easy and we can go from there. So anyway, thanks a lot. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget, again, if you haven't already, to back up the like button and the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you like content like this, we try to put videos out every week. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.